Good morning. Professor Chan, where's Professor Chan? He's up here. Um, Professor Chan, Professor Ferguson, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, it's my pleasure to be here to speak uh, to all of you on this very important subject on the CSR. And uh, congratulations to the organizing committee and the Chinese University MBA program for hosting uh, the 10th CU MBA CSR conference. And uh, being a honorary professor of CU Hong Kong, I'm proud to be uh, part of you, you know, uh, particularly in this conference. Well, in an interconnected world, decisions and investments that are made by businesses, just as much as those made by government, can easily have a direct impact on the health of communities. This is why it is encouraging to see that many of you are interested in corporate responsibility and sustainability. As future leaders, you will be playing a role in ensuring businesses maximize financial, financial is important, but as well as social return on their investments so that the world can be a better place for the current and future generations. You will find that this is no easy job since the global financial crisis in 2008, skepticism about the nature and motives of large corporations has risen sharply. The public relations firm Edelman run some research every year to gauge public trust in companies and other institutions. In 2016, the Edelman Trust Barometer showed that only 39% of Hong Kong people trust the business sector. So sad. At the same time though, three out of every five people agree that business can take specific actions that can both increase profit and benefit the social and economic conditions of the community in which they operate. There's a perception among some people that large companies that achieve good profits are somehow not, not socially responsible. This disconnect between distrust for the corporate sector and high expectation for businesses to address societal challenges is intriguing. This is why I would like to take a step back and look at why cooperation exists, explore how businesses can continue to contribute to the long-term health of communities, and discuss whether corporate responsibility is a business decision that can be a source of competitive advantage and bring positive financial results. Let us start with exploring why company exists. Many of you are, of course, familiar with Adam Smith free market theory, which suggests that we should be working for ourselves to achieve the best economic outcome. Nobel Prize winning economist Ronald Coase built on it and highlighted that people, by working together in companies, are more efficient in coordinating decisions and marshalling resources to work on complex ideas, designs and projects. In the process of providing goods and services that are valued by customers and reaping the financial results of these efforts, Companies also create social and economic value for society. This is very true as the world is getting more and more complicated. Take MTR as an example. Our core business, mass transit. For those visitors visiting Hong Kong, please take our MTR. I can assure you it's one of the best, if not the best in the world. Okay. Um, well. Mass transit is an integrated part of sustainable development of cities. A typical train, a typical train carries around 2,500 passengers, which equals to 25 buses or 1,500 private cars. 
worth of people. So this translates to less road congestion, a dramatic reduction in road site emissions, and more efficient use of land. All of this in turn translates to a better quality of life for the whole community. I can tell particularly our young people and our foreign visitors that uh, before we have MTR, actually there was a lot of debate in this city whether we should have MTR. And I'm glad the decision was to build the MTR some 40 years ago. I cannot imagine how this city can operate without MTR. As a matter of fact, I was telling Professor Chen and Professor Ferguson a story uh, of mine. When I entered my alma mater, Hong Kong University, some 46 years ago now, I still remember traveling from Hong Kong University to Kowloon to do a part-time teaching job. It takes me roughly two hours. Today, because we have opened a Hong Kong U uh, station, connecting Hong Kong U to other stations, the whole journey, the same journey, now takes 20 to 30 minutes. Can you imagine the time I have saved, you know, in doing the same thing? So, it is amazing. There's a general perception that today's social context, that companies take broader human needs into consideration in order to maintain their social license to operate. That means that company must clearly define and articulate their purpose. While it is clear that companies need to be profitable in order to survive, they also need to care about their customers, employees, other stakeholders, and take care of the environment that they live in. MTRs, well and property services are closely linked to the lives of the people and community we serve. Corporate responsibility is therefore about operating safely and responsibly in all aspects of our business, contributing positively to the development of the communities in which we operate, and at the same time, maintaining sustainable financial model so that we can continue to plow back into upgrading our railway assets to serve the community. We established a corporate responsible responsibility policy back in 2005, that is almost the time when you start the conference in 2005, that defines a set of values, objectives, and priorities that guide the way we conduct our business to achieve financial results. The policy helps ensure that relevant factors are taken into consideration when we make any decision across our business. Then how do we go about closing that gap between trust in companies and their value to society? Transparency is the key here. In our hyper-connected world, information is traveling faster and response times are shorter particularly with email, social media, and whatnot. Everyone, customers, employees, business partners, suppliers, investors, is peering to high levels of product information and company knowledge. Communication is no longer one way, from a corporation to its customers. It is now a multi-stakeholder dialogue with stakeholders actively making their voices and concerns known to the company. In MTR, we believe that delivering value to our customers, whether they are passengers, retail, office or residential tenants, as well as the wider community, is our corporate responsibilities to the society. And that is also consistent with our shareholders' interests. We must conduct affairs in a manner that is financially sound and deliver a positive impact for the societies reserved so that we can survive and prosper over long term. Since 2001, the corporation has 
published annual sustainability report detailing the actions we have taken in all business streams to foster sustainable development. We engage and listen to the views of different stakeholders in the process to identify issues of concern, share the key challenges we face, and outline targets and plans to tackle these challenges and enhance our service on the way forward. Let's take our aging society as an example. When the mass transit system was first designed in 1970, some 40 years ago, this issue was not high on the agenda as the demographic outlook was quite different. Fast forward to 2040, which only eight years away, uh, one in four people in Hong Kong will be over 65 years old. I will be crossing that line next year. So, um, <clears throat> to support the continued development of sustainable societies and for the corporation to deliver on its vision of building and connecting communities with caring service, we must adapt our facilities to meet the needs of a larger cohort of older people. So how do we go about doing so? We start with engaging senior citizens groups to understand their needs and assets, what measures we can introduce to improve the traveling experience for them. We regularly organize meetings and visits to seek feedback and keep various senior citizens groups updated on current access provisions and future improvement. As a result of this engagement, we have installed over 300 seats at station platforms and passengers, passengers for passengers to wait for the next train so that, you know, it will not be too tiring for some of our senior citizens. We have added customer service centers with low counters and enlarged and enhanced signage that is legible for passengers with poor eyesight, you know, so it's very thoughtful. We have larger signboards so you can read it. Um, we have also deployed ambassadors who are aged between 65 and 55 at stations to assist mature passengers whose needs they understand because they are part of it and to provide training to our frontline staff on caring for our senior passengers. In this case, senior is defined, I think, anybody who is above 65. Okay? Um, we also have made our station barrier fee free. Today, all MTR stations and light rail stops provide at least one barrier free access and we're looking at further enhancing the user experience by progressively adding more lifts, although we may not be able to do so immediately. For example, we must take into account cost as well as constraints imposed by the regional design and operational conditions when assessing whether we can do more. Factors such as whether we can get direct access to the station concourse <coughs> whether there are uh, spatial limitations such as the footprint required for lift shaft or emergency stairs and whether a station is enclosed by a private lot or affected the final location and the overall visibility of installing an additional lift. It is now a standard requirement to build lifts at station of new railway projects. As you can hear, we have to take into account a number of considerations in making investment decisions and we work with the community and other stakeholders in finding the right balance. These age-friendly initiatives are not only the right thing to do, they are also helping us to build long-term value for our shareholders as we continuously improving our service to perform better in all aspects of our operation. Our age-friendly initiative is just one of the many examples that reflect the MTR Corporation's commitment to corporate responsibility. The Corporation has a range of goals, 
processes, policies, and management system to ensure environmental and social stewardship on issues such as resource efficiency, health and safety, work-life balance, code of conduct, and corporate citizenship. These efforts permeate every aspect of our business, from environmentally sound engineering solutions, like using regenerative braking in our trains, which converts kinetic energy back to electricity, electrical engine energy, and feeds it back into the power systems, or replacing 160 station chillers with more environmentally friendly systems. We also undertake special projects when the need arises to protect community heritage. One example of this was when we were building the Island Line extension to Western District. This is the Hong Kong University station that I was telling you about. One particular challenge arose in Kennedy Town where we encountered magnificent trees, tree walls at Forbes Street dating back more than 120 years ago. Taking into consideration the views expressed by the local community during the consultation meetings, we decided to revise our initial plan in which the trees would have been harmed by the building of one of our exits. In the end, we changed location of the exit which required a reprovisioning of a public swimming pool at a cost of 600 million Hong Kong. It's a lot of money, but we did it. In the process of resolving a particular dynamo, we made another important decision to create a tree protection zone around which construction work had to follow strict guidance. These tree protection measures are now standard in all our new projects. Efforts like this, ladies and gentlemen, are our source of competitive advantage. They help us maintain our social license to operate, especially when stakeholders' expectations on these dimensions are likely to increase further. We also recognize that employees no longer simply clock in at work and clock out at the end of the day. They expect their companies to have a purpose, offer some degree of flexibility in work management, and provide opportunities such as volunteering to enable them to find meaning in and outside of their work. Therefore, we invest in developing and engaging our employees. Earlier this year, we announced the decision to set up the MTR Academy to enhance training for our staff in railway technology, management, customer service, as well as opening up such training opportunities to others in and outside Hong Kong who are interested in becoming competent railway professional. A committed workforce increases productivity and decreases the frequency of staff turnover. You'll be interested to note that our staff turnover rate is very low. It's probably one of the lowest in Hong Kong, at 3.3%. It's probably because we have very good salaries and benefits. So some of you who <laughs> graduate, you want to join NTR, you know, definitely I can assure you that it's a company that pays quite well. But not only that, we are a good company, you know, as you have heard so far. Uh, we have uh, paid a lot of attention to the community, so it's a company that you'll be proud of if you work for us. Anyway, um, finally, it is important to underscore that being a responsible company rests on being financially sustainable. Some people have the misconception that companies with good financial performance are somehow not putting enough efforts in corporate responsibility. Only companies delivering value to customers, both in terms of satisfying their immediate demands and the perception of responsible operational behavior, can achieve good financial results. And only companies with a sustainable 
financial model will be able to reinvest to continue to serve their business goals as well as the needs of the community. Our record and that of many other successful companies in Hong Kong proves that financial success and social responsibility are not two factors in a zero-sum game. They are actually mutually reinforcing. Indeed, this was proved by a study conducted by Harvard Business School professors where they compare 90 high sustainability firms with 90 low sustainability companies in the United States. The study defined high sustainability companies as those that had environmental, social and governance policy that had reinforced a culture of sustainability in their corporate culture since 1990. The professors found that over 18 years period, 18 years period, high sustainability companies significantly, significantly outperformed their counterparts in the stock market as well as in their performance indicators such as return on assets and return on equity. In other words, being a responsible company pays off. Ladies and gentlemen, corporate responsibilities create opportunities for companies to define and measure risk and value creation. As you enter the workplace in a few months' time, or return to your office later today, I urge you to think about ways you can align business activities with the long-term health of society and lead companies to build a vibrant economy for all of us. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite you to stay on stage real quick as we would like to present a token of um, thanks to you. So, Locke from our team. Oh. Uh, Professor Kellogg, um, can you present, help us present a, um, a gift to Professor Ma? Thank you.